Swati Krupp. Well, starting off with a few mentions about water around Bangkok. Firstly, from my daily 10 minute commute along one of Bangkok's canals. Over the past few months, I have to say, the smell along the canals has become noticeably worse. Frequently, you see huge pipes pumping, well, something back into the canals. Today, whilst waiting for the ferry boat, this discharge point at Tong Lo was in full action. Before lunchtime today, it hasn't rained in Bangkok for weeks. More about that in a moment. So it certainly wasn't stormwater belching out of those pipes. And as I noted at the time, and it stinks. It was abundantly clear to everyone waiting exactly what was being pumped into the canal, creating a major health hazard for people living along the canals, the people traveling on the boats, heaven help anybody who actually falls in. Now the other matter about water was the completely out of nowhere showers around parts of the capital just after midday. Whilst the heavy rain gave the roads a quick wash, the showers certainly caught a lot of people off guard. At this time of the year, it's very unusual to have such heavy rain arrive out of otherwise clear blue skies, or in the case of Bangkok recently, hazy grey skies. The Criminal Court has rejected a bid by the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society to remove a piece of online footage that criticises the government's COVID-19 vaccine rollout, or more precisely, the lack of a COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The former leader of the Future Forward Party, Thanatorn, took to Facebook to live stream his thoughts on the government's handling of the national vaccination program criticising officials for procurement decisions and referencing the Thai monarchy. Thai firm Siam Bioscience, owned by the Crown Property Bureau, has been given sole rights to manufacture the AstraZeneca Oxford University vaccine in the kingdom. Production is expected to begin in mid-2021, but the government had attempted to use the country's strict Les Majeste law as grounds to remove Tanatorn's footage and silence the opposition political voice. However, in its ruling, the court says most of Tanatorn's criticism was directed at the government's handling of the vaccine rollout with little mention of Siam Bioscience. As such, the video could not be considered a violation of the Les Majeste law or a threat to national security. The finding comes following Tanatorn's appeal of an earlier ruling that saw the live stream removed from Facebook. The opposition politician has come under fire from staunch royalists who accuse him of dragging the monarchy into the debate on Thailand's vaccine policies and actions. Not that it's going to provide much current comfort to the local hotels and tourist industry right now, but the Thai capital Bangkok and the southern island of Phuket have come in at number 8 and 14 respectively in TripAdvisor's Traveller's Choice Awards 2021. The awards lists the most popular worldwide destinations prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and the places people most want to return to once travel opens up again. According to a press release from the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the awards look at the quality and quantity of reviews and ratings on TripAdvisor when determining who makes the grade. Reviews of accommodation, restaurants and attractions are all taken into consideration. For the 2021 awards, TripAdvisor looked at reviews and ratings from December 2019 to November last year. As well as looking at where people travelled to, while they still could, the awards also take into consideration the places people dreamed of visiting whilst the pandemic was preventing them from doing so. Bangkok still remains popular, combining the modern with the historic, with improved public transport networks, a new extension to the Blue Line underground takes passengers all the way from Ratanakosan Island, home to the Grand Palace and Wat Po, while the capital also boasts an increasing number of Michelin-starred restaurants in addition to its famous street food. Meanwhile, Phuket's beaches remain a draw for many international tourists who dream of returning. The awards point out that the island has over 30 sandy beaches to choose from, with a huge selection of hotels and other accommodation providers. The island's tourism industry has been decimated by the ongoing pandemic, 
but it seems travellers still have the island in their sights once travel reopens. The acting Chinese ambassador to Thailand has confirmed that vaccine manufacturer Sinovac Biotech is ready to export its COVID-19 jab to Thailand. Speaking to the PM today, the manufacturer confirmed the vaccine has been approved for export to the kingdom, but the exact date when Thailand can expect to receive the vaccine has not been confirmed. But the media release did say as soon as possible. The Thai government's come in for criticism from some corners for being slow to roll out a national vaccination program. In Indonesia, the national vaccine rollout began in January, whilst in Singapore, the first vaccinations were administered at the end of December. During his call with the manufacturer, the PM confirmed Thailand's commitment to a national vaccine rollout in which at least half the population will be vaccinated. The government's already ordered 2 million doses of the Sinovac Biotech vaccine, along with 26 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine and a further 35 million doses reserved. In neighbouring Myanmar, anti-coup protesters continue to defy warnings from the country's generals and are into their fourth straight day of demonstrations. All this while the military, now back in control after a decade of pseudo-civilian government, imposed bans on gatherings at key sites. Coup and army leader General Min Aung Lang made televised speeches last night to justify seizing power, accompanied by a statement from the military saying that clear action would soon be taken against the demonstrators. Protests continued again today, especially around the largest city, Yangon, including near the HQ of the National League of Democracy, the party of deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who was arrested early last Monday during the coup. In last night's address, the Burmese general insisted the seizure of power was justified because of voter fraud. The NLD won last November's national elections by a landslide, a huge landslide, but the military never accepted the legitimacy of the vote, only getting 7% of the votes cast. The country's election commission dismissed the grumblings of the generals just days before the February 1 coup. Myanmar is now under a one-year state of emergency. And just to finish today's news, we'd like to acknowledge yesterday's unpleasant anniversary, exactly one year since a Royal Thai Army soldier shot and killed 31 people and injured 58, some of them still suffering their injuries from the incident. The 32-year-old gunman went on a rampage at his army camp before heading to the Korat Terminal 21 and shooting civilians. He was eventually shot and killed at 9am the next morning. After the shooting, the then Army General Apparat vowed to reform the military's business and bring back transparency and accountability. No such reforms appear to have happened. And with that rather unpleasant note, that uh, one year anniversary, we thank you for watching Thailand News Today. We'll be back again tomorrow. Oh, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.